This is an open meeting and posted right around the door, the corner as you come in the door is the actual Open Meeting Act. If you would, please stand with us, join in a mo moment of silence and as well the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> and we'll tell, we'll do roll call. Granquist? Here. Lange? Here. Merrill? Here. Lawson? Here. Murin? Boning? Here. Faus? Here. File? Here. Okay. Moving forward, could I have approval of the consent agenda as was provided you? I'll make a motion, Your Honor. Second. We have a motion with a second to approve the consent agenda. If you would please. Your Honor, I will be abstaining from the consent agenda because I have an item on there tonight. Okay. Hearing Councilman Faust so abstaining. All others, if you will please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Councilman Murin absent. Councilman Faust abstaining. Motion carries. All right. And as well, a recommendation for approval of the full agenda from the council. So moved, Your Honor. Second. Motion with the second to approve the full agenda. Again, if you will please vote. All council members voting in the affirmative. Okay, a few special presentations tonight, so sit back and relax and listen a bit here. We'll start with the proclamation for Poppy Day. Whereas our community has a continuing responsibility to veterans in veterans' homes, hospitals, or nursing homes, and whereas the American Legion Auxiliary feels obligated to help provide for the welfare of our veterans and their families of those who made the supreme sacrifice in defense of this country, and whereas the American Legion Auxiliary Unit number 16 of Norfolk has been established to aid veterans, and whereas the American Legion Auxiliary has chosen Saturday, May 16, 2015 for its annual Poppy Day and has announced that all funds collected will be used to assist the veterans and their families in the Norfolk area. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Sue Fookman, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, by the power vested in me, do hereby proclaim Saturday, May 16, 2015, as Poppy Day in the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, and the surrounding area, and I urge all citizens to recognize this observance and support veterans. And I believe we have someone here to speak to and receive the proclamation. Council, all those up here, I think you will see that she's already provided you with your copy to be born on that day. Mm -hmm. Thank you Thank you. I'm Deanna Riggins from the American Legion Auxiliary, and we want to thank the City of Norfolk Council for allowing us to have Poppy Day and issuing this beautiful proclamation, even has little flowers on it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, we're very proud to do this. Uh, we have lots of volunteers, but we have many, many people who respond. Uh, our, our people go out and they meet and greet at the various businesses and the restaurants, and they're so willing to let us come. And uh, we use Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, and we're just real proud to get this money to help our veterans who are serving and who have served. How long have you been doing this, Deanna? Do you know? Here? How many years? Oh, I don't know. No clue? Okay. I, I was just curious. I know it's been a long time going, so. I will look that up before next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deal. Okay, because of the Brave, we are the free. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're thinking just the yellow. Okay, next is a proclamation for the month of May 2015 as Building Safety Month. 
Whereas the City of Norfolk's continuing efforts to address the critical issues of safety, energy, efficiency, water conservation, and resilience in the built environment that affects our citizens both in everyday life and in times of natural disaster gives us confident, confidence that our structures are safe and sound. And whereas Building Safety Month is sponsored by the International Code Council to remind the public about the critical role of our community's largely unknown guardians of public safety, our local codes officials who assure us of safe, efficient, and livable buildings. And whereas each year, in observance of the build, Building Safety Month, Americans are asked to consider projects to improve building safety and sustainability at home and in the community, and to acknowledge the essential service provided to all of us by local and state building departments, fire prevention bureaus, and federal agencies in protecting lives and property. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Sue Fukman of Norfolk, Nebraska, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2015 as Building Safety Month. Accordingly, I encourage our citizens to join with their communities in participating in the Building Safety Month activities. Someone here to Anybody that is here to, who wants to accept this? Trent? Mayor, I'll probably accept it. <laughs> Very good. We will let you. We do recognize. Okay. Stumbling around. Okay. Um, next proclamation for May 4th, Loyalty Day. Proclamation for Loyalty Day, whereas Loyalty Day originally began as Americanization Day in 1921, is a counter to the Communist May 1st celebration of the Russian Revolution, and whereas on May 1st, 1930, 10,000 veterans of foreign war members staged a rally at New York's Union Square to promote patriotism. And whereas in 1958, Congress enacted Public Law 529, proclaiming Loyalty Day a permanent fixture on the nation's calendar. And whereas President Dwight Eisenhower proclaimed May 1st, 1959, as the first official observant of Loyalty Day, now therefore be it resolved that I, Sue Fookman, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, by the power vested in me, do hereby proclaim May 4th, 2015, as Loyalty Day in the city of Norfolk, Nebraska, and I urge all citizens to observe Loyalty Day, May 4th, 2015. Doris, you want to come forward? Or do you want me to come in that direction? You okay? No, I'll, I'll get here. Yes. I know you can. Um, I'm very proud to accept this proclamation on loyalty. Today was loyalty day because we usually have it on the first, but with the schools having so many activities on Fridays, we decided to have it today. And with the rain spitting down on us, we did march down Norfolk Avenue. We gave every student in the school a flag. And we started out with 288 flags, and I think we had just two little bundles left, so you know how much we presented this. It started in Norfolk in 1966 under the uh, commandership of Warren Price. We always called him Smokey. He used, I don't know whether anybody remembers Smokey. He worked for the telephone company for years. And um, we've continued ever since. And we're very proud to do this uh, on behalf of, I'm president of the Orchid de Auxerre, and on behalf, behalf of my girls, we want to say thank you for the many things that you let us do. So, and we say thank you to you for the many things that you do for them. That's what we're for. Yes. And as you can tell, she is the one that controls. 
And last here, certainly not least, though, is the proclamation for National Drinking Water Week. Whereas water is our most valuable natural resource, and whereas only tap water delivers public health protection, fire protection, support for our economy and quality of life we enjoy, and whereas any measures of successful society, low mortality rates, economic growth and diversity Productivity and public safety is in some way related to access of safe water. And whereas citizens are stewards of the water infrastructure upon which future generations depend, and whereas citizens of our community are called upon to help protect our source waters from pollution, to practice water conservation, and to get involved in local water issues. Now, therefore, I, Sue Fookman, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, by the power invested in me, do hereby by proclaim May 3rd through the 9th, 2015, as National Drinking Water Week. And I call upon citizens of the community to help protect source water from pollution, to practice water conservation, and to get involved in local water issues. Dennis? Um, just a couple of real quick items on the National Drinking Water Week. Um, as pretty much as the mayor read the proclamation there, it's basically to recognize safe drinking water in the United States um, uh, during the week of May 3rd through the 9th. Um, uh, two quick items I want to mention. Number one is we are going to have an uh, open house at the Westwater Treatment Plant located at 300 South 49th. That will be tomorrow, Tuesday, May 5th, and that's from 4.30 to 6. Um, we'll be giving tours answering questions about the water system, things like that. So if people can make it, we would sure appreciate uh, you showing up. One other one I just want to mention too also, uh, one thing you talked about in the, uh, in the proclamation is the um, being stewardship, stewardships of the, uh, the citizens and, and things of, of the uh, infrastructure. One um, I want to mention is that um, we've been very fortunate in Norfolk for having the present and also past count mayor and councils be very supportive of the water system in general. Um, I think everybody's always recognized the importance of the uh, of water in a community. So we appreciate the mayor and city council's present and past for that. And also, um, a thing that uh, helps us out also very strong is our workers in the in the water industry. <clears throat> so we thank you guys for for always supporting us. So thank you. Very thank good. You. Thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate your being here. Okay. Let's go into the regular agenda then where we're looking for consideration of ordinance number 5338. They'll be annexing property located at 1216 West Monroe Avenue. Ordinance number 5338 passed on first reading at the April 6, 2015 council meeting and on second reading at the April 20th, 2015 city council meeting. So tonight we're looking to pass ordinance number 5338 on third reading if I could have a motion as such. Your Honor, I would offer for consideration a third reading of ordinance number 5338. Second that, Your Honor. Okay, we have a motion with a second to, for the third reading of ordinance number 5338, which would be annexing property as stated. Any discussion at all? No discussion at all? Roll call. Please vote, you're right. Third reading, we, we don't talk, do we? <laughs> no, that's quite all right. My fault. All council members voting in the affirmative. Ordinance 5338 carries on third reading. No, that's fine. Appreciate the reminder. Consideration of ordinance number 5341 is next, which would make Iron Horse Drive a one-way street from 7th Street East and then north to Prospect Avenue. Ordinance number 5341, it passed on first reading at the April 20th, 2015 City Council meeting and so is forward to us again this evening. Do I have a motion? Your Honor, I'd move consideration of ordinance 5341 on second reading. Second. 
Okay, we have a motion with a second. I believe it's probably a little discussion that needs to be had on this. Um, yes, Your Honor, and Council, uh, staff continue to look at the last meeting for any other, other available options, and although there's options out there, none of them are very good, especially in the short term. So we came back right back to this spot. Um, so if we want to be supportive of the Postal Service, and more importantly, supportive of our citizens able to deliver their mail to a central location in a drive through manner, this location seems to be the best one that we can really find. It'll be quick, we can get uh, the concrete poured, or the Postal Service can get the concrete poured, and we can, with your actions, obviously change the one way drive and let folks be able to deliver their, mess, their mail out of the window. So that's what we have. We want to make better options in the short term, that's for sure. I think it would be Miss, if I did not state that um, Chief Meisner and I did have conversation at the request of the probation office, there seems to be concerns. Obviously, it will directly affect them. Um, there's a concern about, I believe, their need for parking at specific times, not necessarily daily, but at specific times. Um, Chief and I had a conversation with Catherine, who is the chief over there and again we heard her and she heard us we had good discussion we told her we would take looks at different areas of which we did as our city administrator has stated and again it doesn't seem like there's just any place that is a great place um, I don't know that everybody would agree with what we're looking at and certainly um, we come back after the efforts of the city staff to take a look at a couple different locations. So I certainly want Catherine to know though that we have attempted, we have looked at it. Um, I do see someone else here that may have some input on it. John, do you wanna come forward and, and speak to this at all? Love to hear from you. I'm gonna ask you if you will. Yeah, if you would, if you would speak right here, state your name for us and address and. So we, so we get you recorded and on, yeah. Um, Thanks, John. John. C. High of 605 Iron Horse. We're an adjacent property. Yes. And we've had discussions with Chief Meisner, and actually we're in support of it. Uh, the only thing we ask is that you adequately mark Iron Horse Drive coming through. Um, because we do have farmers that'll park sometimes next to, out in front of us. It'd be nice to have it marked into two lanes so that there's truly a right lane and a left lane. The other, op the other thing about that is so that people don't pull out from the uh, post office uh, drive through clear across the whole, the whole street. It'd be nice to have it marked half, half all the way down the middle so you've got a right lane and a left lane just for just, just to bust up traffic. And the other thing we will need, I'll just mention this, I mentioned this to Chief Meisner, it'd be nice to have snow removal pretty early in the mornings. Uh, we tend to be one that's forgotten until about 11 or 12. And it'd be nice to have that earlier. But the marking is a big deal, <clears> I think. Yeah. Uh, it'd be nice to have right lane, left lane. So people know, and you could, you could mark those lanes as to what they're for even. Um, Parking, I was just thinking about that. I parked out here myself for just a second, but you could actually have, I mean, would it be any problem for those people to mark, park here across the street? We've talked about that, John, and I think some of them are already doing that, Maybe actually. They, they, they so, do that a bit. And most of their parking, at, you know, just <laughs> witnessing the parking patterns of, of the complex, mm -hmm. if you will, most of the parking seems to be on the <coughs> northern end of Iron Horse Drive, right. so right across the way here. And then we have an agreement with, um, with the probation officer for some of their staff overflow parking as well. Yeah, I don't think that, we see that occasionally, but it's not a, an ongoing thing like you right. mentioned. Right, yeah. So I, I'm in support of it. I think it'd be a, a great place to have it. I'm a little bit partial to that, but. Very uh, good. The marking the street will be important to us. All right. Okay, all right. Thank Thanks for coming forward. We intend to mark it and sign it accord, accordingly. Good. Thank you. All right, thank you, John. Your Honor, I also had a conversation with Catherine at the probation office. She said that you and Chief stopped by and she was very cordial to you and did a lot of nodding. She indicated to me she does not want that there. She thinks it'll be bad because they have a lot of drug testing and they get a lot of traffic and it is packed in there at times. They are using our facility to park and things, but the, she just thinks it's a bad place. It'll cause traffic jams with the Social Security office being across the street. And she is not really unsupportive. And, I, and she did indicate that when you and the chief were there, she did a lot of nodding, but she said, I'm being cordial, but she said, uh, I really don't want it there if, if you can not do it. And, and I wasn't in support of it the first time. 
and I'm not in support of it now. So. Okay. Well, and you know, and I agree. I mean, however, I will tell you, she's vocal, and yes. respectfully so. Yes, um, so are we. So I mean, again, we listened to her, and we did try to take a look at different areas. So I think the important piece of all of this is what we're trying to do is make sure that we're taking care of the needs of the community folks. And while, you know, and she told us this isn't like it's an everyday occurrence. Um, they have testing that happens kind of on the spur of the moment where everyone is called in. And I'm not sure that even having that not there would allow for as many maybe are called in. So again, while I respect that and certainly, you know, they've taken on a lot more over there um, through the state requirements in the last probably year or two. So all that being said, they've maybe outgrown that building in a sense, but um, I, th I honestly think it can work. And certainly Chief was pretty clear in letting her know how we would best adapt what we were asking her to give to us to, or to give, I shouldn't say her particularly, but what we're looking to do with that, that street. So um, it might be an inconvenience for him, I understand that, but as well, I think it's going to be a good location, Midtown, just as was asked by some of the citizens, so. We looked over, Mayor, just, just so you and the council, we looked at over six different sites. You know, we're in the central, you know, the goal was to keep it central right. because that's what the community's expectation was and history has been. So we looked at over six different sites, um, and this one really stuck out as the best one, again, if we're, if we're going to serve the community with blue boxes to deliver their mail. Was was the major major was her major concern Catherine's major concern that traffic congestion or parking? Parking is her major concern. At least that was my understanding, Chief. Tell me if if you believe anything different. But I, I think she was adamant that um, again they're what she say they have increased their staff by 14 in the last year or so. And that in itself has created, you know, because my first thought was how'd they get in there in the first place into that building with the requir parking requirements. But um, that has been handed down to them from the state of Nebraska. They're taking on more responsibility and maybe even more to come. So, but we did have conversation and I think only Tuesday mornings here, planning commission mornings, sometimes you'll see the parking lot out here full depending on what's on that agenda, but that starts at what, 7.30 in the morning and normally they're gone by 8.30 or so. So we've offered that parking to them as far as overflow, but other than that, and it's not like it's an everyday occurrence, and she did agree to that. She did say that's a true statement, so. I noticed driving up there's a lot of cars on the street tonight. Is that right? Coincidence, <laughs> but, but so is all that, any parking on the street gonna be removed? That won't be allowed to be there with the new? The parking from the curb north yeah. is, will remain. The parking from the curb west is the one that you'll be removing, and that's where the boxes will go. Right, Chief? Can I say that right? Side. No, just on the north side. Okay. The north. Yeah. The north right. and west side. How many parking slots is that, Shane? That's a good question. I, I'm, I would guess probably six to seven, I'm guessing. You got any better idea, Chief? That, that they're going to lose? Is how are we going to lose, or, or how many will remain? How many would you lose? About oh, 10, I okay. I thought you meant how many right out here remain. Okay. I think there might be about 10. There's a driveway, a double driveway uh, for North Star. Uh, it's also on that north side. So there'd be no parking until you actually have past the driveway. And you might have about 8 to 10 stalls that, that, that they were tightly packed together, but they'd like to lose. Okay. But no more than that. Thank you, Chief. Yes, John. Sure. Okay. Understood. Okay. Anyone else that has any comments or wants to speak to this at all? If not, we ready for a short title, Beth?
An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska to amend Section 24-94 of the official city code to designate Iron Horse Drive as a one-way street with an east and north direction of travel to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect and to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. Okay, and with that, I would ask you to vote, please. Second reading. All council members voting in the affirmative, except for Councilman Faust, who voted against the motion. Ordinance 5341 carries on second reading. Okay, are we moving forward? We're looking at consideration of ordinance number 5342, which prohibits parking on the north side of Iron Horse Drive from the east curb line of 7th Street to three, 330 feet east of the east curb line of 7th Street. Ordinance number 5342 as well passed on first reading at the April 20th, 2015 City Council meeting. And so with that, I would entertain a consideration of Ordinance 5342. Your Honor, I move consideration of Ordinance 5342 on second reading. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion with a second. Um, certainly, I think this is covered with the previous discussion, unless anyone has any questions as far as council or anyone else. Okay, then hearing none, uh, short title, Beth. An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska to amend Section 24-164 of the Official City Code to restrict parking on Iron Horse Drive to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect and to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. Please vote. <coughs> All council members voting in the affirmative. Ordinance 5342 carries on second reading. Okay. <coughs> And last on the list here is consideration of approval to purchase a new and unused replacement wheel loader from Omaha Tractor Incorporated for the qualifying low bid of $100,000. <clears> this item was tabled at the April 20th, 2015 City Council meeting. So what I will need is a motion to take this off the table and let us to continue. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion to remove it from the table and move forward with well, I need, I'm sorry, we need to vote on that, don't we? I'm sorry. If you would, please. <clears throat> All council members voting in the affirmative. All right, and now we can get into discussion. Um, Mayor, I'll take that. Okay. That, um, Mayor and council, the staff, has, at your request, has reviewed the specifications of, of the two <clears throat> low bidders, the lowest bidder and the next lowest bidder, and compared and contrasted, and that compared and contrast sheet is in your packet. Uh, when you look at the, the two loaders uh, on paper, um, and that's what we, how we do when we're bidding out a piece of equipment, we look at them on paper, and if they meet the specifications, you can see both of these loaders meet the specifications are, and are pretty similar in nature. Um, so one has more horsepower than the other, one has more torque than the other, and it kind of goes back and forth as you look down your sheet. They both offer the same warranty. Um, so, you know, with all being, having that all reviewed, I can tell you that um, Keeping our confidence in the bid specification of the bid process for the city of Norfolk is important to us. It's important to our vendors uh, going forward. Um, so with all that being said, um, your staff continues to recommend the lowest bid of the Doosan loader from Bobcat of Omaha. We do have uh, the general manager of Bobcat here, Mary Fletcher, um, as well if you have any other questions. And the gentleman from Titan is also here as well. Um, but. Bobcat of Omaha is a low bidder. Um, your, your staff is confidence, has confidence in that loader and, the, and in the bid specifications, and we would recommend that you approve the low bid, which also fits in the budget perfectly. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Council? Um, if I remember right, one of the questions we had uh, last time this came up is was the question about the warranty. The second lowest bid is $1,900 uh, more than the lowest, and there was an argument made that the, the warranty on the case model would um, potentially offset those costs. Uh, did the, was the warranty on the Doosan model originally three year, or was that revised? Mary, if I can explain that exactly what happened there to best, go ahead, sir, if you want to come on up to the podium. Mm -hmm. 
We didn't include it in the uh, specs written out. It is standard on the municipality for us. We have uh, a targeted program from Doosan. They're providing for us for all municipalities. Um, three year, 2000 hour warranty. Um, we only spec it per your spec sheet, so we didn't obviously write that in there. So the warranty was three years, it just wasn't included in that. Absolutely. State your name for me, will you? So we Murray Fletcher. Thank you, Murray. Oh. Okay, go ahead. Included in that, then do you do the service? Is that the service agreement in there also that way? We or? provide four services through the life of that, and that's parts, labor, travel time, everything. We will come up here and take care of it. Four services through the three year time period. Correct. I was I was thinking that the well and correct me if I'm wrong at the last meeting I was thinking that it was the services for three years uh, that there wasn't a limit on the number of trips or was there we can do more if we need to but the four is based off of uh, the hours of usage 500 hours is a standard <coughs> change on them 2,000 hour warranty is what we were going off of Little. And that's the standard. I mean, that's the standard. You're gonna, not going to over-service the vehicle. I mean, the, the loader would be serviced as according to your service schedule, which Pat passed here as well, and he'd be able to tell you what our service schedule is, Councilman, on that, but uh, I guess I'm not sure what the question is. Well, what I was getting at is, okay, if it's all based on 500 hours, do we burn up 500 hours in a year or not? Or do we Ever. burn up? Pat and Jim probably have it, but as we looked at it, I think 500 hours is the most we'll use it. And on average, usually our new loaders get into service and they get the most use because they're new for obvious reasons. So I think, Pat, you may be able to directly, but, I, but 500 hours is probably about the most we'll use it a year. So. Okay. Okay, because I was seeing it, it said the average was 475, but that's, I understand that's the average across the board. So that's basically right. what I was getting at. The new. I mean, I see it in my world all the time. You get a new piece of equipment, it's the only one that anybody wants. I mean, they'll, they'll drive 10, 10 miles to get the new piece of equipment so they can use that instead of, instead of something that may be five years old. So. Right, but as we dispatch crews across the city to do the work, I mean, we're going to use the equipment that's available. Of course, they're going to use the new one, and so you probably get 500 hours on that new one per year. We also have... Uh, telematics on the machine, which will give you access to. It'll give you all your uh, troubleshooting if there's any fault codes. And then it'll also, I can look it up and I can tell you when you're gonna need service, oil change, if a filter's bad, and your maintenance department or manager can have all that access to all that as well. That's free for the first three years. Since I don't know what breakout course is, and that looks like the biggest difference here, can you tell me what that is? Um, <laughs> or maybe back good. <laughs> that's actually, I'm not, that's not my specialty, but it would be the uh, tip from your bucket where you tip to break out if you're breaking out concrete or. Sure. The maximum amount of heavy digging. force at the cutting edge of the I got bucket. You. One of the other talks was next day service or next day parts to us. I assume uh, both of you do that. I would almost assume that's kind of standard. Maybe I shouldn't assume. Um, do so on. We do. Obviously, we have next day air. Um, we can have next day parts. That is no problem. Doosan actually has on anything under warranty a 48 hours parts guarantee. Um, where if we can't provide a breakdown part for you within 48 hours, we'll give you a machine to use until we do get it. That's standard from Tucson. Council, any other questions? Well, you know, the way the court pointed out, the breakout for us, there's a 5,000 pound difference between the two. Is that not a real big deal in the specs? I know we've got Well, 20, our specs were 20,000 minimum. 20, minimum. We set that because that's what we've always set it at. You know, we don't do a whole bunch of breakout of concrete, some obviously when we're doing a street repair, but we have. Um, we're comfortable with the, that, that minimom of 20,000. That's why we spec it that way. Is the 5,000 additional 
breakout force matter in the real world? It's a matter of judgment, I suppose. Is it $1,900 more and or worth $1,900? It's a matter of judgment, I suppose. But what's important, I think, to, for the council to keep in mind is the, the bidding process is important and the confidence of our vendors with as they relate to their business relationship with the city of Norfolk. We put out a set of specs. The specs were met. Lowest bidder, unless we have a solid place to hang our hat, then it has to be pretty solid. Um, it's hard for us to say don't accept the lowest bid. And I, and personally, you know, as your city administrator, I don't see the solid hook to hang our hat on in this, and that's why we're, that's why we're uh, recommending the low bid and do some. Uh, me and you oh. talked about this too, but I think the point the council kind of was making was that it felt like. You know, we were getting a situation where for we were buying it and you know we were going we're sticking so hard to the low bid we're buying an inferior product at the low bid when you jump up right to here for a better product and that's what you know none, none of us want to sit up here and micromanage obviously and but, yeah the, but you the get better a situation product is, where you want to make it seem like we're making good choices and obviously if that it did, you didn't feel that way in the last meeting and you only had one, one, uh, you, you know, Doosan wasn't here at the last meeting. So yeah. they're both here tonight. I mean, you know, as far as trying to litmus test the better product, quote unquote, it's pretty hard to do when you have both products that meet a spec, unless you have a history um, with the company that is profound, a history with the piece of equipment that's profound, I mean, positive or negative, something that you can hang your hat on again that says, you know, we're going to move to the next responsible bidder in the process because of this history or this experience with the product and you know so we write our specs you know we could in theory I suppose we could take our specifications and drill them down so tight that we'd only get a Doosan or a Case or a John Deere or, or, or a Cat but then we'll, be, we'll get in trouble and we'll, we'll have a situation where no, we'll have no competitiveness and then the price of our equipment's going to go up and that only hurts the taxpayers so that's why we try to write a, a reasonable specification that all bidders can can uh, produce a responsible bid, and that's what happened in this, in this case. If I can add, um, I realize you guys probably haven't seen a lot of Doosans around. We've only been a dealer for three years. Um, we have a testing ground down in Arizona, and we have all of our competitions machines there, and we have taken every major contractor in Omaha down there, and they are buying orange now. It is very good quality, and we provide very good service. I can assure you that you won't be disappointed in the performance. I think part of the issue is that because there's, there's some contractors sitting right here right now and, and none of us have heard of, I haven't heard of Doosan until yeah. the other day. I've heard of Case, yeah. obviously. I know where Case is made, you know, and so it makes it kind of, when you get, when we have to get involved in this, like, like I said, we're micromanaging right now, when we have to get involved in these situations, then obviously we sit up here and ask those questions. But Absolutely. So you're, then you're sitting, okay, so are we gonna be, you know, I, mean, I just look in here, we got 475 per hour to so what's the cost for us to service these machines. Are we gonna be nickel dime five years from now because this thing's breaking down? Cause I've never heard of it. You know, I know I've heard of it, but you know, me and Shane have had this, um, conversa had this conversation already. <clears throat> and and uh, I guess- it I will try to ease your mind. Yeah. Um, Doosan is over hundred years old in South Korea. They are the largest and large excavators in the Asian market. They're number one. Um, they bought Bobcat out in 2008 to try and use their dealer mm -hmm. channels because they weren't getting North American exposure for exactly what you're talking about. Um, it is a good product. They've been making their own engines for over 50 years. Um, your machine will actually have a Doosan engine in it. The next size up are Scania's and then the larger ones like most people are running Yanmar Deutz. Um, if you walk around that machine, they're all Everybody makes a pretty good quality machine anymore. As far as quality goes, I, I assure you, you'll, you won't be disappointed in it. And Shane, I, I assume that a record of performance is kept within city departments on large Absolutely. pieces of machinery. A detailed one on all of our equipment. You know, that's how we build our, build our experience module for any piece of equipment we have, whether it's a fire truck, police cruiser, a loader, a grader, whatever we're doing, we keep a detailed set of records. And, as far as the maintenance and breakdown and, and the, the ergonomics of it, the usage of it, um, um, how our staff likes it comes into play some, but not to a great extent because um, 
again, we got to write a specification that gets us the most responsive bidders in order to meet the what I believe is the is the intent of the bidding statutes. You know, so that's where we want to be. You know, and um, there wasn't very long ago we bid a fire truck, and we had questions from the council about, boy, we don't have very many bidders, Shane. Why not any bidders? You know, we only had one or two. Um, we just got to be careful of that. We got to have a specification that's again gets the job done, allows for the, the, the floor to be set in the bidding process, and allows the vendors to come forth with their product. And then we vet them to the best we can. We vet them, we vetted the deuce on loaders with, uh, with, with folks out there and our, our contemporaries out there that have them and have good reports across the way. And Pat can speak directly to that because he was the one vetting, vetting deuce on. So um, there's a relationship that's built. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Obviously, don't, don't know Maria at all, or the gentleman from Titan, other than from the last two weeks. But you know, the relationship that we that we build with our vendors is important for us. I mean, the reputation of the city of Norfolk is important for that process. So that's what we try to do as your staff. Any other questions or concerns, sir? I got one more. I'm going back to the parts again, it's probably for both of you. I'm curious, and we talk about the next day parts, and I'm curious on number one, who's, who pays for that if you needed it next day, and number two, where are they located? Um, I'm guessing you, some are made in America and some aren't, and that might be the same way for both you guys, but. Our parts warehouse is in the <laughs> suburb of Chicago. Okay. Um, anything under warranty, we pay for. Anything out of warranty, you pay for. Okay. Did you answer that too, please? Yes, uh, that would uh, that would be the, uh, uh, the pretty much the same situation. Parts warranty and out of warranty. Um, our parts uh, are uh, uh, Kansas City and or for the wheel loaders out of, out of uh, Fargo because they're built in the Dutch loaders are built in Fargo. Thank you, guys. Any other questions at all, Council? Um, you talked about vendor relations. Is that, does that play any role in when deciding when we're purchasing any product, the relationship staff has with the different vendors? That is that, I'm sorry, is that what? Yeah, we you talked about vendor relationship briefly, you know. Does that play really any role when we're looking into buying products, you know? Well, absolutely. I think it plays a role in to the positive or to the negative as far as the mental model going forward. You know, if you have a good relationship with a vendor, of course you want a product from them if you can if you can get it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't play a role in how we drive our specifications because if it did, we'd write a specification that's very narrow in range so we could drive that specification and that bid process to that to that vendor and to that product. And we try not to do that because then you get accused of of, be, of playing favorites and then your reputation of the city of Norfolk gets pulled down a tug or two. So we want, we want to try to avoid that. I mean, coming from putting my old fireman's hat on, you know, there's certain, certain uh, I have a mental model of certain vendors out there when, when it comes to fire trucks and some good, some bad. But we always try to write our specifications loose enough that we get a good product for the community and we get competitive bids because that's important for the bottom dollar. So I get, my only point though is, does that, does that mean we're getting the best product when we do that? I don't know how to answer that. I, know. I mean, the I best know. product, it that. is tough. The best product is um, sometimes in the eye of the beholder. I mean, I'm an old binder guy. If it's, you know, we'd have all international. <laughs> if I went back to my farm days, you know, I always liked the red stuff. But uh, that, would, that would upset my John Deere friends, I suppose. But, you know, uh, again, we, got, we can't drive our specifications and drill them down so hard that we just eliminate all the vendors from the get-go because we won't have any competitiveness and then the prices will gradually go up. Yes. Wait, go ahead, Clint. One, one of the things in response to the question you asked Shane, and I don't see, well, Todd, you're the guy I'm looking for. I didn't see you there. Um, well, you can jump down if you want to. I, I believe, I, I, th I know that there's been some times, the, the code allows, the city code allows for you to take bids that aren't the cheapest. It's the best 
you know, supposedly the best value, however you define that. And of course, different people define that different ways. My thought was that I can remember a time frame a number of years ago when we had a, uh, a contractor, the city did appreciable work with a paving contractor. They were low bidder and low performance. Okay, so they continued to come as a low bidder and a low performer. And at some point in time, they said, uh, you know, that, that cost them just the way that Shane talked about. And so there's a provision to not take the low bidder. You talk about why you don't take the, the least expensive one, and it can be the product, it can be the service, it can be a whole bunch of things. We kind of got to the point where after a while of doing that, you say, at what point in time do they need to have another chance to see if their performance has improved or whatever? In that particular case, we never quite got there because we were having that discussion the staff was having that discussion, and then that contractor went out of business, and they didn't bid anymore. Uh, but I do think, in in response to that, wasn't there something like that where, with with some apparatus at the wastewater plant, the low bid wasn't taken? Isn't that the last time it that that happened? Truck. It was on a truck. Yeah, and that was kind of an out of state issue. But it was based on on that criteria that's in the that's in the code that aims that ends at saying the low bidder. You were, were able to articulate the, the the reason that you didn't take the low one was because you were able to articulate particular things that are in the code that went to value as to why that wasn't right. the sure. best value. We did so. that with the second fire station. In fact, and those were two quality contractors, and we took the next highest bid because of a value of time. At that point, that decision was made, and we took the it was a thousand dollar difference on a over a million dollar structure, and we took the next the next responsive bidder because his time frame was three months shorter. So, there's examples of that that we've hung our hat on again, for lack of better words. But um, for typically, if we can't hang our hat, we're taking the low bid, and that's the way the bid is designed. Okay, I think it's been great discussion by this council, and I think it certainly has served well. Um, as far as the discussion that's been had, and I think it's very um, probably responsive to what our citizens ask of us, but it isn't easy. It isn't easy to sit up here and make these kind of decisions, but certainly I, I would think the discussion that's been had has been certainly helpful to all of us. So if anyone has anything else for questions or discussions, then I would look for a vote. Voting in favor of the motion, Councilman Lange, Merrill, Moaning, Fouse filed. Voting against the motion, Councilman Granquist and Clausen. Motion carries. Okay. That be it on the agenda. There is one thing I would like to make a comment about here. Um, I've had a couple calls um, noting if you folks have come in from the west of Norfolk, coming into Norfolk, driving east, you'll notice we have a great sign out there that welcomes you to Norfolk. If you're going the other direction, though, if you're headed out, going toward Battle Creek, you will now see that the back of that sign has a nice little remark on it, thanks for stopping. And while the city of Norfolk loves taking credit for these things, I need to tell you that our good friend, Mr. Tom Schomer, is the one that really wanted to see and, and see that to happen, and he made it happen. So from us as elected officials in the city of Norfolk, our thanks to Tom Schomer and Telby for making it happen. The, the wording that's put on there, I think, is thanks for stopping, maybe, or something. But um, it's, a nice, it's a nice deal, I think, and I applaud him for making it happen. So. Um, I see nothing else on my agenda. So there is, I just remind everybody, there is a retirement um, open house tomorrow for Sergeant Gary Kruger at the City Council Chambers from, I'm sorry, on Wednesday, May 6th, from 4 to 6. So we'd love to see any and all there. And other than that, we're adjourned.